Hello, this is Brian Eastlick and Jordan Bladen. We're going to be doing some exercises that you can do comfortably from your home during the COVID-19 virus. So I'm going to go ahead and have Mr. Bladen come on out now. What's up, guys? And he's going to start with different types of push-ups. All right, so normal push-ups, we do flat. Um, one of the biggest things that I've recognized is finding your placement for how far your hands are apart. Most of the time I go just about a little bit farther than shoulder length and keep my elbows tucked in. So they're like this as I go down and it's controlling and keeping the core of your body in a straight line. Elbows tucked in, down and push up. And as you push, you're squeezing your chest and your triceps and going down. This is going to be hitting your triceps, chest, and a little bit of like your front anterior deltoid. As we take these and we kind of manipulate them a little bit and change them, if they're a little bit harder, you can always go towards these where you're an elevated surface going up. This is going to light, lighten some of the weight. And you're going down, same concept with where your elbows are, pushing in your body. As you do these, you go down, pause, squeeze your chest as you push up. It's going to be hitting a little bit more of the outside part of your chest. Um, and it makes it a little bit easier. It's more of a better starting point for somebody who has trouble doing some of the flat. As you progress, we can start to try to hit some of your top chest a little bit more by elevating your feet. <clears throat> by doing these, it would be the exact same placement. Having your feet up off the ground, go down and up. Remember to squeeze and push with force every time the top and allow yourself to squeeze as you go down as well, creating a good stretch and hold each top part. This will be hitting a lot more top chest. Triceps still burn out on any of those that you do. Um, you can change, move the elevation, different heights. Um, if you have other objects in the house to make them harder, you can always add weight onto your back. Um, those kind of things just kind of alter some of it. Um, yeah, and that's different variations for push-ups. Uh, I think the next thing we'll be working on is... Um, crunches. Crunches? Yeah. Right, so I know a lot of people are constantly working about like core. Um, one of the biggest things I've learned is the difference between sit-ups and crunches. Mm -hmm. Sit-ups target a lot more of like your lower abs and your obliques, where crunches are going to be hitting the whole entire abdominal like chain in the front. One of the most common mistakes that I see people do is when they're doing their crunches or their sit-ups, they go like this and they put their hands on the back of their head and they go like this and it's like they're trying to pull their neck up. Um, what this does is it stretches out your vertebrae um, puts a lot of strain on your neck and ultimately like you're putting yourself in a very vulnerable position for injury. So one thing that I've learned that helps me greatly is instead of putting my hands right here, I kind of put my fingers behind my ears, same concept, except for I'm not pulling. It's more about bringing your sternum to your hips and creating that crunch. And as you go up, exhaling and then breathing in as you go down, every time that you exhale, it's going to cause you to squeeze and tighten your abs a little bit more. So as I go up, like this and you're stretching out and you're bringing your sternum to your core and you should feel everything tighten especially if you exhale out so it's like as you go up you can start to alternate and turn this is going to be hitting a lot more of your obliques <clears throat> on the sides you have your original or your main part of your core and then you have obliques that run up on the side. So it'll give you that like V effect. Um, I think for lower abs, you can do your normal sit-ups uh, where you're just kind of coming straight up and down. But one thing that I really enjoy doing that kind of creates a little bit more tension, um, I always try to strive for less reps and like the most, the most results with the least amount of work that I have to do. So these are V sit-ups. At first, you can kind of hold yourself up like this. Um, makes it a little bit easier and you're going to kind of bring your legs up like this as your same concept of bringing your sternum down and just kind of holding that squeeze. So you're going to be like this and kind of come up and holding it down. You can do as many sets as you can of these and then when you start to feel tired you can alternate into flutter kicks which is kind of going like this and this will start to burn out some of this lower part and the bottom outside part of your obliques. <clears throat> How about, we got next? how about back? Oh, back. All right. Now, one of my favorite home back exercises that I've learned is super simple, but I feel like I get a lot from it. And really all you need is 
like a towel. So you just take like a normal towel like this. You're gonna kind of roll it up. And I'll hold it um, like about shoulder width apart, maybe a little bit less, or a little bit more, whatever feels comfortable holding it. You know, lay flat on your stomach. As you're stretched out, you're gonna have the, the towel out in front of you and you're gonna kind of lift up. As you lift up, you're going to be squeezing like your glutes, um, a lot of your lower lumbar, and you should feel it tight just from lifting up. Um, basic ones are called Supermans, and you kind of just go like this and hold them up and go down. You should start to feel like a contraction on the very first um, rep. Once you start to get a hang of those, to start incorporate more, like all of your back, you have your, you have your towel. A big focus is trying to pull this towel apart. So you're constantly keeping tension. This is going to cause a lot more strain on right here, keeping all of these muscles tight. As you lift up and you do your Superman, you pull apart and come back like this, bring the towel to your chest and out. I've learned that those definitely um, target a lot of area around my back. Um, and it's a really good time under tension movement because every single time you lift up your legs and you start to draw back, you're constantly under pressure. Um, biggest thing I would suggest is to control your breathing as you're laying down on your chest. It kind of, like, as you can tell, I'm slightly out of breath. Um, it pushes. And so you have to make sure you're controlling your breathing, breathe in, breathe out and doing, making sure that you're paying attention to your breathing. <clears throat> um, okay. Got rows. Okay. Um, I think one of the next ones that we can do, and we have weights right here. Um, if you don't have weights, I mean, you can use a gallon of milk or orange juice, basically anything with like a handle on it. Um, there's lots of different objects you can find around the house or make something. <clears throat> Let's see. So I know it. a lot of people want to have some of the width down here. Um, I recognize like when I'm doing my lats that uh, there's different alternations for single arm rows. So if I'm sitting up a little bit more like this, I'm trying to target my lats. What I'll be doing is having this and I kind of keep straight up and down like this. And as I allow my shoulder to stretch out completely all the way down, I should feel stretch all inside here across the upper parts of my traps, rear delts, um, rhomboids, which are underneath, very thick part of your muscle. There's lots of muscles in your back, but allowing yourself to stretch all the way down and feel that and kind of keep my chest up in the air as much as I can as I'm bent over like this. And I'm gonna allow a stretch, start to bring my shoulder back like this, and then pull the weight back up. Every single rep, allowing for a good stretch at the bottom and squeeze tight at the top for a good contraction. Um, if you're targeting more of your lats, I imagine that like, I'm trying to put the weight in my back pocket. So that's where I'm bringing it to, to bring it to here. That is going to be targeting more of this area. So I kind of come down, up, and bring the weight to my back pocket and squeeze every time. And go down. As you move and you start to want to work a little bit more on your upper back, all you have to do is change the positioning of how much you're bent over. So instead of keeping my chest up as much as I was before and keeping like less of a bend in my hips, I'm gonna go a little bit more straight to move my feet out a little bit more and be parallel to the ground. Same concept though, stretch, pull up and contract. When I'm doing these, I'm bringing the weight almost to like my pec area or the side of my ribs. <clears throat> so same thing all the way down pull my shoulder back first, and then squeeze, hold it tight, and control the movement. Everything is about control, breathing, stretch, and contraction. Okay. You can show us some legs. Oh, legs, all right. Um, let's see, um, we can do walking lunges are one that um, are some of my See, like favorite exercises. We have like a love-hate relationship. Um, they're hard, but they are amazing and they hit all sorts of different areas. 
<clears throat> you can do this at any park outside in your house if you have enough room to walk. As I go through, you can step straight forward um, and I figure out whatever the spot is to where I make sure that my knee doesn't go super far over the plane of my foot. So I don't want my knee to go farther than my toes. So that kind of helps me determine out how big of a step I have to take to create my stride. So I'll go out like this, down, stretch. I should feel a good stretch in my hamstrings and in my glutes on this side and tension on the front part of my quads, like where the teardrop is right above your knee. Then go down and as I'm pushing, I'm driving up with my forward foot and it's almost like I'm pushing with my heel less than toe. So as I push with my heel and I'm pushing up, I should feel everything stretch and i um, squeezing my glutes and my hamstrings as I go up. So you can either choose to walk and do them in a row, push, push, or if you don't have a whole lot of space, you can do them standing and just kind of step forward and step back. So we're going down, push up. Just like that, and you can alternate. As you start to feel comfortable with that, it gets a little easier. You can always handle weights with it, add weight. Um, whether you're holding something in each hand, so you can be holding something on each side like this, and kind of keeping your chest up and your body tight as you do the exact same thing. Um, let's see, we have body squats. Body squat challenges. Seems like it's not that hard, but repetitively with a ton of reps, you definitely start to feel burnt out. Um, I kind of keep my feet about shoulder width apart. You'll start to feel where, um, what's comfortable for you. One thing that I do that I imagine that helps me is um, imagining like, you know when you see babies and they kind of sit like this and they're in this natural like squatting down position. Um, I know that I tend to like mess with things as I'm trying to do it and I overthink it and recognize it. But like that is a natural position for human beings to be able to sit down and squat down like this. So I try to hit that mark as I'm doing my body squats. So like here, have my hands out in front of me and just kind of drop down and up. Um, as you start to progress, you can move, again, add weight to it. I like to choose, these are called goblet squats. So anything that I can, I hold the weight like this and I have it in front of me at about chest height and I can hold it like right here. And I do the exact same movement, but it's just uh, control and allowing me to add more weight to make it a little bit more difficult. <clears throat> um, the last one for legs, uh, I think these are called Bulgarian split squats. Having any type of something to elevate one foot off the ground, this will be more of an isolation movement per leg. Um, when we think about how far we step out from here for this movement, we're looking at the same pattern from away from this. So a lot of times I'll go like this, step out about how far I would be, and I put one foot up behind me on this, and I do the exact same movement, <coughs> um, and make sure that I'm still trying to not break that front plane <coughs> over my toe, drop straight down, and back up. And it's almost as I go down, I'm starting to push my body back a little bit, so that way I'm keeping my, like the bottom of my leg or the bottom, yeah, the tibia um, perpendicular with the floor. So I want to keep it almost straight up and down the whole entire time. And I should feel a really good stretch in the front of my quads right here and tension on my hamstrings and glutes and using my glutes and squeezing as I push up. Um, and you can alternate feet and go back and forth. And those are amazing. How about shoulders? Shoulders. Yeah. Um, so we have a little smaller weights. <clears throat> I have to grab a lighter weight for this one. Shoulders are fun. Um, definitely give you that full rounded look. Um, recognizing when you have a, there's three parts to your shoulder. You have your anterior, which is your front, your posterior, which is your back, and then you have the medial middle part, which is your medial deltoid. Um, there are three separate heads to one muscle. So, Making sure that you're hitting them from all angles will definitely give you that three-dimensional look and kind of strengthen all other, other movements that you're doing in regards to upper body. So anything that you have weight that you can hold on to, you can do front raises, which are going to be right in front of you like this, 
I'm going down. I try to keep my chest up as I'm going and focus on feeling most of the tension right here in the front of my shoulder. You can do unilateral and going up like this, or you can do both at the same time. And I just kind of slow, controlled, and making sure that the whole entire time I'm squeezing exactly where I'm trying to target, creating that mind to muscle connection. Same thing, you don't have to lift it super high. You can just go to about eye level.